so very important point that ileostomy should be spouted spouted means it is protruding from the skin surface why because here the effluent is liquid now we are going to start ileostomy and colostomy so what is ileostomy it is the exteriorization of ileum to abdominal skin and what is colostomy it is exteriorization of colon to abdominal skin so first see what is ileostomy ileostomy is exteriorization of ileum to abdominal skin exteriorization of ileum to abdominal skin and what is colostomy it is the exteriorization of colon to abdominal skin what are the common indications of stoma formation or ileostomy and colostomy you have seen in surgery ot's and surgery ward so the patients who are suffering from colorectal cancer patients having chronic ulcerative colitis or crohn's disease these are the common indications so see the common indications of stoma formation common indications of stoma formation right so first is colorectal cancer second is chronic ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease simple now see there are two types of stoma one is temporary stoma and one is permanent stoma you have seen that generally this temporary stoma is for fecal diversion why because we have to protect a distal anastomosis that's why we have to divert the fecal matter temporarily and generally this is loop stoma and what is end stoma end stoma is usually permanent now let's discuss it with example there are two types of stoma one is temporary and the second is permanent clear temporary we discussed that generally temporary stoma it's the loop stoma and why this loop stoma has been created this has been created for fecal diversion why we want fecal diversion because we want to protect a distal anastomosis see the example imagine a patient is having carcinoma sigmoid colon and we performed sigmoidectomy after performing sigmoidectomy we are going for colorectal anastomosis to protect this colorectal anastomosis i'm going to create loop ileostomy clear so this is temporary stoma which is loop stoma for fecal diversion permanent stoma generally these are end stoma end stoma okay let's discuss it with one example imagine a patient is having carcinoma rectum and for this carcinoma rectum we are going to perform apr full form abdominal perineal resection so you removed rectum you removed anal canal you are left only with sigmoid and you have taken sigmoid in the left iliac fossa permanently so this is end stoma and generally this is permanent clear so these are the types of stoma temporary and permanent now see what are the sites of stoma see the sites if you see ileostomy generally this ileostomy is created in right iliac fossa so we have to make ileostomy in right iliac fossa similarly sigmoid colostomy which is usually permanent if it's an end stoma and this sigmoid colostomy it's created in left iliac fossa transverse colostomy generally this transverse colostomy is temporary and it is made this transverse colostomy it is made in right upper quadrant clear so these are the sites of stoma now see what are the basic differences between ileostomy and colostomy whenever we are going to make ileostomy you have seen in the words that the ileostomy should be protruding from the skin surface protruding that's why it is spouted why because the content or effluent is liquid so if it is not spouted what will happen there is spillage of content and because of that patient will be having excoriation dermatitis and colostomy is usually flush flush means it is at the level of skin 
so it should not protrude from the skin why because in colostomy the effluent is solid you know that from fecal matter water absorption occurs in the colon right so that's why the content which is coming out from the colostomy it is usually solid so it is made flush so what's the basic difference between ileostomy and colostomy ileostomy and colostomy okay so very important point that ileostomy should be spouted spouted means it is protruding from the skin surface why because here the effluent is liquid why because effluent is liquid if it is not spouted then there will be spillage of this liquid leading to excoriation dermatitis second problem in ileostomy since there is liquid effluent and there is increased output coming from the ileum as compared to colon so that's why in ileostomy there is increased risk of dyselectrolytemia clear so there is increased risk of dyselectrolytemia because the effluent is liquid and the content is more the output is more as compared to colostomy colostomy it is made flush so it should not be protruding and here the effluent is solid why it is solid because water absorption occurs in the colon so this is the basic difference between ileostomy and colostomy now see what are the types of stoma there are three types of stoma one is end one is loop and third is double barrel in which there are two separate stomas how we are going to create these kind of stomas see now imagine this is the bowel okay this is the bowel so what happens if i'm going to divide the bowel if it's ileum or colon i'm going to divide this is the proximal and this is the distal end so what happens i'm going to close this distal end and this distal end is kept inside the abdomen and what happened i'm going to take out this proximal end so this is end stoma the distal end which is closed kept inside proximal end is taken out this is end stoma so if it's ileum this is end ileostomy and if it's colon this is end colostomy now imagine a second situation in which the loop of bowel has been taken out so see this loop has been taken out now this loop is divided not completely partially and what happens both ends are taken out see the stoma is attached and when both ends are taken out you can see that there are two external openings these are joined together so there are two external openings which are joined together so this is what loop stoma loop of bowel has been taken out it is being cut and you can see there are two openings what happens in double barrel stoma double barrel ileostomy or colostomy whenever i'm going to divide this bowel and both of these ends are taken out via two separate openings when both of these ends are taken out via two separate openings you will notice that there is presence of skin bridge in between these two this is known as double barrel so there are two stomas so these are the types of stoma so what are the types of stoma so you can see types so first is end stoma in which distal end distal end is closed kept inside closed and kept inside abdomen okay proximal end is taken out so here you can see only one end proximal end is taken out simple you can see loop stoma second is loop stoma so in loop stoma the loop of bowel is taken out loop is taken out and it is cut before suturing so loop is cut before suturing clear so there are two external openings but these are joined together two external openings which are joined together okay and the third is double barrel so there are two separate stoma this is known as double barrel clear so here there are two external openings and so here there are two separate external openings with skin bridge in between so here two separate openings
okay with skin bridge in between so there is skin bridge in between clear so these are the types of stoma end stoma loop stoma and double barrel usually there is double barrel ileostomy in neat and aims the most commonly asked question related to stoma is the stomal complications and the stomal complications are of two types if the complication is seen within one month of creating the stoma and that is known as early complication and if the complication is seen after one month of creation that is late complication so see the stomal complications this is very very important asked almost every year stomal complications so it is divided into two types first early complications early means within one month late means after one month you have to remember the time period also early it is seen within one month and late it is seen after one month clear so whenever you are going to create the stoma if you are not going to fix it properly what happens there is retraction so it may retract so there is retraction there is abscess formation the location should be proper okay but sometimes what happens there is poor location it is in relation to some bony prominence so it's very difficult to fix the stoma it can lead to ischemia if the vascularity is compromised and this ischemia can cause necrosis clear there can be detachment and because of effluent liquid effluent there can be dermatitis so it can lead to detachment there can be dermatitis okay sometimes it's very very dangerous thing sometimes you have noticed that some resident is going to close the proximal end and going to open the distal end and distal end has been taken out clear so this is negligence okay so what opening wrong end opening wrong end and especially in ileostomy the output is high so there is high output output is high these are the early complications okay and how to remember there is a mnemonic and the mnemonic is rapid o the mnemonic is rapid o retraction abscess poor location ischemia or necrosis detachment dermatitis opening wrong end output high so this is rapid o now see the late complications late complications are stenosis prolapse stenosis prolapse they can be parastomal hernia parastomal hernia there is gas order and there can be obstruction so gas order and obstruction clear again it's easy to remember because here also there is a mnemonic and what's the mnemonic the mnemonic is spf go so it is spf go clear so stenosis prolapse parastomal hernia gas order obstruction these are the complications now see the one liner questions which are favorite questions of aims people and neat pg people now see these are the two famous questions which are asked related to ileostomy what is the most common early complication of ileostomy and whenever we are making ileostomy we are supposed to look at the color of ileostomy it should be pink just after creating if the vascularity is compromised you have noticed that just after creation of ileostomy the color changes from pink to dusky and within short period of time what it is necrosed why because of ischemia so most common early complication of ileostomy that is ischemia or necrosis and overall most common complication is because of effluent which is liquid because of liquid effluent spillage there is excoriation or dermatitis so two important questions first what is the most common early complication most common early complication of ileostomy clear and here you can see there is 
ischemia leading to necrosis this is favorite question of aims it was asked minimum four to five times so it is ischemia sometimes they mention ischemia in the option and sometimes they mention necrosis in the option clear and the second question here you can see there is dermatitis or excoriation of skin you have seen these patients in the ward so overall overall most common complication overall most common complication of ileostomy clear and this is skin excoriation or dermatitis so this is skin excoriation or dermatitis clear so these are the one liner questions related to ileostomy now see the one liner questions related to colostomy first tell me what is the name of this complication so can you see in this parastomal region parastomal means around stoma what happens you can notice there is hernia can you see around parastomal region means around stoma can you see there is herniation of bowel so this is known as parastomal hernia and if you are talking about end colostomy or loop colostomy in both of these the most common complication is parastomal hernia so first one line of question that what is the most common complication most common complication of both end and loop colostomy both end and loop colostomy and the most common complication of both end and loop colostomy it's the parastomal hernia this is parastomal hernia okay there is another complication that is prolapse so here you can see that there is prolapse of stoma clear so now we have to compare the end colostomy and loop colostomy so if you see loop colostomy the opening is larger in loop colostomy and if the opening is larger the opening which is made in abdominal skin so it is larger so there are increased chances of prolapse so the risk of prolapse is higher in loop colostomy and if we see end colostomy in end colostomy the dissection around stoma is extensive so in comparison to loop colostomy there is extensive dissection performed around stomal opening in end colostomy and because of this there is increased risk of parastomal hernia so prolapse it is more common in this is prolapse prolapse it is more common in loop colostomy why because there is larger opening and this is parastomal hernia parastomal hernia it is more common in end colostomy parastomal hernia this is more common in end colostomy why because of extensive dissection because of extensive dissection so this is all about ileostomy and colostomy Thank you.